Okay, let's talk about um, foreign exchange and um, we're going to talk about, I have two little videos here. The first one's going to be about um, the, keeping track of foreign exchange and a little bit about what happens when there is movement on these graphs. Um, these two graphs are together and then these two graphs are together. And then I have a little bit more talking about how money flows from one back to the other. So if this doesn't make as much sense, watch the other video and then try to combine them. But um, America needs to keep track of how much money and how many goods and services leave the country. So we do this with a, uh, what's this like, comes down to be like a balance sheet. But um, um, we call it a balance of payments. Um, and there are two basic types of accounts. The first one are current accounts. Um, these are all goods and services that are imported and all goods and services that are exported. Additionally, any currency leaving the country is added in the current account. So, for instance, if we trade with, if uh, we buy a bunch of um, goods from Germany, then um, we get a debit, a debit currency leaving, a credit currency coming. So if we be, buy goods from Germany, our money is going over to Germany and we're in their goods. So that would be a debit in the current accounts because it's a good service. We are paying for a good or service if we buy German goods. If we buy, you know, um, German telephones, uh, that's, a, that's a good. We are giving them our money so money is leaving for the debit, and then that would be an import goods and services. If Germany is buying our telephones, right, the what we manufactured, then we're getting money, which would be a credit to the balance payments, and we're sending them our phones, so it would be a current export, right? Capital accounts are financial assets or investments, so like stocks and bonds. If we invest money into the bonds of um, other countries, or if they invest into the bonds of our country, um, that would be part of a capital account. Or if financial, uh, financial assets or investments, like if we buy land in a different country, or we buy a factory in a different country, that would be an investment. If we bought, if we bought a factory in China, for instance, um, that would be money leaving our country. That would be a debit. Um, and um, if somebody bought a shopping center or a, a factory in America, that would be a credit because money is coming to us. And that would be a credit in the capital account. If we bought goods or services, or sorry, we have financial assets somewhere else, in Brazil or in China or in India, then it would be a capital account debit. Okay? So credit is when money is coming into America, debit is when money is coming out of America. Uh, current accounts and the balance of payments are goods or services that are uh, traded, imported and exported, and then money going in. So like if people live in America and they have family outside of America, let's say in Canada, and they send money to Canada, then that is money leaving the United States and going to Canada. So that would be essentially a, uh, a, a debit of currency leaving America. Okay? Now, our foreign exchange graphs looks like this. Let's compare euros and United States dollars. So on the x-axis we have quantity of US dollars. On the y-axis we have euros per dollar. Okay? On this graph we have quantity of euros and we have US dollars per euro. Okay? So what happens if we trade with, let's say, France, who is in the um, is in the Eurozone, if um, French people come to America to buy our goods. So let's say they come to America as tourists. All right. What they're going to do is they're going to want to spend money. We, we, they're going to spend money here. They're going to spend American dollars. And so there are banks, which we're going to get to in the other video, where um, foreign exchange is put on the market. And then if you're buying goods in dollars, then there's going to be an increased demand for dollars. Okay. So the demand would shift this way, the demand sub one, let's say, and the American dollar, so let's say here is the price of the dollar and here's the quantity, what's going to happen is we're going to have a higher price and that will mean that the United States dollar has appreciated relative to the euro because there's a higher demand for U.S. dollars. 
Some people might say that um, on the foreign exchange market, more dollars have been taken off, so there'll be a reduction in supply um, because fewer dollars are on the foreign exchange market, and so the supply would actually go up. Either way, what happens is the price of the dollar rises or appreciates. Now, if this was, again, the same thing, if French people are coming over and spending American dollars, they are putting French um, euros on the foreign exchange market to get dollars. So the supply of euros on the foreign exchange market would go up, supply sub one, and what happens is the price was here, now the price is down. So we say that the price of the euro has depreciated or become um, cheaper relative to um, the U.S. dollar. So we'll give an example. Let's say this is euros and pesos, all right? So in the euro peso theory, let's say that uh, so this was the tourist visiting the United States. Let's say interest rates rise in uh, Europe. Well, that would be a capital good, right? So if interest rates rise in Europe, that means that um, investors from outside of Europe can make more money by putting their dollars in European bonds because interest rates are higher. So if they want to buy European goods, this, this, in this point actually bonds, then there will be a higher demand for euros because they have to buy these bonds in euros. So this is the quantity of euros. The demand for euros would increase, which would increase the price of euros. Similarly, let's say it's peso. Let's say they're a Mexican investor investing in European euros, right? Um, so if the interest rates for some European country goes up, Mexicans are going to, let's say Mexicans are going to buy um, these financial assets in euros, the demand for euros goes up. Well, to get those euros, then Mexican people are going to have to go to a financial um, institution and put pesos on the market to get those euros. They're demanding euros by supplying the financial institution with pesos. So the peso um, would depreciate as there are more, a higher supply of pesos on the international market. Okay, so we have um, increased demand for euro, appreciating the relative price of euros rel uh, to um, pesos, and then a higher supply of pesos, which decreases or depreciates the value of pesos relative to your euros. Okay. So we've seen two instances here. It would be a current account type of instance where you have tourists coming over, using American dollars, or demanding American dollars, appreciating the U.S. dollar, and then putting euros on the the um, financial, uh, the currency market. So increasing the supply, right? Um, you can even say, if you want to, that since we're um, demanding more U.S. dollars, there's a smaller demand for euros that also would show a depreciation in the value of the euro. Um, but that is a good example of how these two work, right? This would be a financial instrument like an increase in interest rates. Um, this would be um, just a, a tourist thing, right? And capital accounts are financial assets and investments that are traded amongst countries, where current accounts are goods and services that are traded amongst countries and also currencies leaving the economy.